In this lecture, we'll talk about logarithmic and exponential equations. We'll start by talking about logarithmic equations. So let's think about the following three items. First, log base a of x and a to the x are inverses, so we can use them to cancel, cancel each other out. Second, if we have y equals log base a of x, we can rewrite that as x equals a to the y, and third, if we have log base a of m is equal to log base a of n, so we have the same logarithm on both sides of the equation, we can cancel the logarithms out and set what's inside them equal to each other. So m would equal n. And this is assuming that m, n, and a are all greater than zero. So these three properties can be used to help solve logarithmic equations. So let's start with an example of solving a logarithmic equation. We want to solve the equation log base 3 of 3x minus 1 is equal to 2. And before we start solving the equation, let's note that the domain of this is going to be the set of x such that x is greater than 1 third. Remember for a logarithm we need to ensure that what's inside the log is going to be greater than 0. So in order to solve for x, the first thing we need to do is cancel out the logarithm. We can do this by using an exponential with a base of 3 on both sides of the equation. So 3 raised to the log base 3 of x, 3x minus 1 should equal 3 squared. The 3 and the log base 3 on the left hand side will cancel each other out since they are inverses, leaving us with 3x minus 1 is equal to 9. We add 1 to both sides of the equation, which gives us 3x equals 10, and then we divide both sides of the equation by 3, giving us x equals 10 thirds. Now we need to make sure that this solution is part of our domain, so 10 thirds is greater than 1 third, so it works. So our answer is x equals 10 thirds. So here's another example. Log of x plus log of x minus 21 equals 2. We'll start by noting what our domain is. So for this problem, domain is the set of x such that x is greater than 21. Otherwise, we'll have a negative number in one of our logs. And now we can go about solving the equation. So we want to first combine the two logarithms together using the product property. So since we have log x plus log of x minus 21, we can combine that to be one log, log of x times x minus 21, and that'll be equal to two. We can distribute the x throughout the parentheses inside the logarithm to give us log of x squared minus 21x equals two. And now the next step to solve for x is to get rid of our logarithm. So since we have log base 10, we'll use an exponential of base 10 on both sides of the equation. So 10 raised to the log of x squared minus 21x should equal 10 squared. The exponential base 10 and the log base 10 are inverses, so they'll cancel each other out, leaving us with x squared minus 21x equals 100. So now this is just a quadratic. We can solve this the way we would solve any quadratic. First, we need to get all numbers on the same side of the equation. So we'll subtract 100 from both sides, giving us x squared minus 21x minus 100 equals zero. And we can factor this out. It factors to be x minus 25 times x plus four equals zero. We set each factor equal to zero. So x minus 25 equals zero or x plus four equals zero and solve for each factor. So that means x will equal 25 or x will equal negative 4. But finally we need to compare these two solutions with our domain. So remember for our domain x has to be greater than 21. So that means that x equals 25 will be a solution but x equals negative 4 will not. Here's another example. This time we want to solve log of 2x minus log of x minus 3 equals 1. Again, we'll start by finding the domain. So note the domain for this problem is the set of x such that x is greater than three. And then we'll go about solving for x. So the first thing we need to do is combine the two logs. We'll do that using the quotient prop property. So log of two x minus log of x minus three can be rewritten as log of two x divided by x minus three. And that'll equal one. To solve for x, we need to get rid of the logarithm so since log has a base of 10, we'll use an exponential of, with base 10 on both sides of the equation. So 10 raised to the log of 2x divided by x minus 3 equals 10 to the 1. 
the exponential base 10 and log base 10 will cancel each other out, leaving us with 2x divided by x minus 3 is equal to 10. So to solve for x, we want to get rid of the fraction. So we'll multiply both sides of this equation by x minus 3. That gives us 2x equals 10x minus 30. We want to get all of our x terms on the same side of the equation, so we'll subtract 10x from both sides, giving us negative 8x equals negative 30. And finally, we'll divide both sides by negative 8, giving us x equals negative 30 divided by negative 8, which can be simplified to 15 over 4. Now the last step is to check and make sure that 15 over 4 fits in our domain. So 15 over 4 is larger than 3, so this is a solution. Alright, now let's look at some examples where we have logarithms on both sides of the equation and they have the same base. So we're going to start with the example 2 times log base 5 of x equals 3 times log base 5 of 4. Again, when we're working with logarithms, the first thing we want to do is make a note of what our domain is. So for this problem, we have a domain of the set of x such that x is greater than 0. And so to solve an equation where we have a log with the same base on both sides of the equation, we want to get those logs by themselves. So we're going to move the coefficients from the front of the logarithm into the exponent within the logarithm. So 2 log 5 of x can be rewritten as log 5 of x squared, and 3 log base 5 of 4 could be rewritten as log base 5 of 4 cubed. And now since we've gotten the two logarithms to be equal, and there's just a log, and they have the same base, we can set what's inside the logarithms equal to each other. So if log base 5 of x squared equals log base 5 of 4 cubed, that means x squared must equal 4 cubed, which is 64. So to solve for x, we'll take the square root of both sides. That'll give us x equals 8, or x equals minus 8. And keeping in mind that our domain is the set of x such that x is bigger than 0, that means our solution will be x equals 8, and we will throw out x equals negative 8. So x equals negative 8 is not part of our solution. All right, here's our last example with logarithms. Again, we're going to have a logarithm with the same base on both sides of the equation. So negative 2 times log base 4 of x equals log base 4 of 9. I'd like for you to take a few minutes and see if you can work through this problem. Once you feel like you have an answer, or if you get stuck, go ahead and continue the lecture and work along with me. So first, let's note that the domain is the set of all x such that x is greater than 0. Next, we want to again get the logarithms by themselves, so we'll move the coefficients from the front into the exponent. So this will become, give us log base 4 of x to the negative 2 equals log base 4 of 9. And since we have a log base 4 on both sides of the equation, we can set what's inside the logarithm equal to each other. So x to the negative 2, which is the same thing as 1 over x squared, has to equal 9. If we want to solve for x, we can take the reciprocal of both sides, giving us x squared equals 1 over 9. And then if we take the square root of both sides of the equation, we'll get x equals 1 third, or x equals negative 1 third. And since x equals negative 1 third is not part of our domain, we can throw that out, and our solution will just be x equals 1 third. So we'll finish up this lecture by talking about solving exponential equations. We'll start with a couple of strategies for how to solve them. So if you can write both sides of the equation with the same base, a to the u equals a to the v, then set your exponents equal to each other, and then solve. So u would equal v, and then you can solve for whatever variable you're looking for. If you cannot write both sides of the equation with the same base, so if you have different bases, a to the u equals b to the v, take the natural log of both sides of the equation, and solve from there. So let's look at an example. 3 to the x is equal to 14. Now, there's no way that I can write both sides of this equation with the same base, so we're going to use the second approach where we take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 3 to the x equals the natural log of 14. Now, one of the benefits of using the natural log, or any logarithm really, is that we can take the exponent of x and bring it out in front using the power rule. So, using that power rule, that'll give us x times the natural log of 3 
equals the natural log of 14. And now to solve for x, we'll divide both sides by the natural log of 3. So we get x equals the natural log of 14 divided by the natural log of 3. And if we evaluate that in our calculator, that'll be approximately 2.402. Here's another example. 2 to the negative x equals 1.5. Again, there's no way for us to rewrite both sides using the same base, so we'll use the similar method to what we did in the past example. So I'd like for you to take a couple minutes and see if you can figure this one out. Once you've finished, or if you get stuck, feel free to continue the lecture and work along with me. Okay, so since we can't write both sides with the same base, we'll take the natural log of both sides of the equation. This gives us the natural log of 2 to the minus x equals the natural log of 1.5. We use the power property to bring the exponent down, which gives us negative x times the natural log of 2 equals the natural log of 1.5. And now to solve for x, we'll divide both sides by negative natural log of 2, which gives us that x equals the natural log of 1.5 divided by minus natural log of 2. And if we evaluate that with a calculator, that will give us approximately negative 0.585. Let's do another example that's a little bit more complicated. So this time we have 2 raised to the x plus 1 power equals 5 raised to the 1 minus 2x power. Again, our bases are not the same. So we'll start by taking the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 2 raised to the x plus 1 power equals the natural log of 5 raised to the 1 minus 2x power. We'll use the power property to bring the exponents down, so x plus 1 times the natural log of 2 equals 1 minus 2x times the natural log of 5, and then we'll distribute on both sides to get rid of the parentheses. So x times the natural log of 2 plus the natural log of 2 equals the natural log of 5 minus 2x times the natural log of 5. Now we want to get all terms that have an x in them on the same side of the equation and all terms that don't have x on the other side. So we'll start by adding 2x natural log of 5 to both sides. And we'll also subtract the natural log of 2 from both sides. So that'll give us x times the natural log of 2 plus 2x natural log of 5 equals the natural log of 5 minus the natural log of 2. Since both terms on the left hand side have an x, we can factor that x out, giving us x times the natural log of 2 plus 2 natural log 5 equals natural log 5 minus natural log 2. Now to solve for x, we'll divide both sides by the natural log of 2 plus 2 natural log 5, and that'll give us x equals the natural log of 5 minus the natural log 2 divided by natural log 2 plus 2 natural log 5. And if we evaluate that with a calculator, that'll give us approximately 0.234. Let's look at one last example. This time we have e to the x plus 3 equals pi raised to the x. Again, I'd like for you to give this a try and then follow along with me when you've finished. So since e and pi are different bases, we'll use the approach where we take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of e to the x plus 3 equals the natural log of pi to the x. And natural log and e are inverses, so they will cancel each other out. So that'll give us x plus 3 equals x times the natural log of pi. We want to get all of our x's on the same side of the equation, so we'll subtract x from both sides, giving us 3 equals x times the natural log of pi minus x. Since both terms on the right-hand side have an x in them, we can factor the x out, giving us 3 equals x times the natural log of pi minus 1. And to get x by itself, we'll divide both sides by the natural log of pi minus 1. So that'll give us x equals 3 divided by the natural log of pi minus 1, which if we evaluate with a calculator will give us x is approximately 20.728.